Okay, welcome back to the simulator. Flight Sim 2020 on my Pimax Crystal. <coughs> Excuse me, this getting old means that I have to cough a lot more than I used to. Let's start over again. Welcome back to the channel. We're back in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. This time, however, we're going to play in Steam. Because I had a viewer ask me, I don't know whether he's being sarcastic or being funny, or he just, I don't know, but he said, is the... Does the crystal, is the crystal allergic to showing frames per second? Because nobody seems to show them on their videos. And I thought about it. Well, I said, you know, he's, he's kind of right. It's not allergic to it. We can see the frames per second when we're working in OpenXR. And uh, you just, you can't on the flat screen when you're watching the video record. It doesn't show up. So you sort of have to trust us. And then I thought, well, maybe this chap doesn't trust us. So I thought I'd do a recording in Steam Play. And I've got uh, Visual Acuity set down to, well, let's see if we can find it here in Steam. Okay, let's just look at what our settings are in Steam. So I've got it set down to about 3580 by 3950 in Steam. That's per eye, and that's 100%, which is a change because it used to be that it would default to something like 5,800 by 2180 or something, which was way, way, way too high. So setting it down to 100% seems to help quite a bit. And if we go to um, the Pimax client, let's just see what I'm sitting at in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I've got it set for 100% balanced. Now this is, uh, I'm using a beta version of the uh, of the firmware and it's not going to be in use a whole lot longer. There's another change coming right away. But what they, what they did was they changed it from maximum, from just a sliding scale to giving you a series of pre-selects if you want. If you select this one with the Chinese characters, um, and I don't mean to be insulting, I'm not sure what, uh, ideograms? I don't, I don't know what to call the characters, so I don't want to be insulting. Um, but this, this basically gives you the range from 50% up to 200%. And uh, if you set it on balanced, it should give you somewhere in the middle. Uh, okay, so let's apply that. And we don't need to start because we're already started. We'll just close that, we'll close that. And we'll go into VR mode. And then once we're in VR mode, and I'm set, I'm happy with it. Oh, I know. We have to get back to the... Oh, I guess we did. Okay. You'll see that I've got Pimax XR, the runtime that controls whether we're in Steam or OpenVR, OpenXR, set to Steam. I also went into my other program, Open Composite, which you don't need anymore for Flight Sim 2020, but because I've got it enabled for IL2, I went into that little app and and switched it to Steam too, so that we're we're operating in Steam. And I should have, I do. I don't know if you can see it. Let me just center the view. If I look down, you can see that we have uh, FPS VR running, and it's showing 46 frames per second on the ground. Uh, I'm trying a different glider airfield today, somewhere in Europe. I can't remember the name of it. I just kind of picked it at random. It looked like a Norwegian name, so I thought, that's cool. Because uh, from what I understand from one of my viewers, there's some amazing soaring in, uh, in Norway. The biggest problem I've had with this sim is that takeoffs behind the glider, uh, behind the tow plane, are quite difficult. And when you do the training one, the, the glider lifts off quite normally, but in here, it seems like you're either stuck to the ground or you're 10 feet above the, the tow plane. And stuck to the ground is bad, but 10 feet above the tow plane is worse because you can easily tip him over. And when you tip over a tow plane, nothing good happens. I'm going to set the trim a little bit aft. Are you going to work for me, trim, trim setter or upper? Oh, it's going forward. Should go back. I don't want it full back. What I want to be able to do is just hold the stick forward a little bit and then ease it back to pop into the air. Spoilers are in. 
All right. I mean, according to frame rate, we're doing okay in Steam, but it looks a little. It looks like I'm chasing the image a little bit in Steam compared to OpenXR. What it looks like is that the trees are a little less clear than they are in OpenX in OpenXR, and the video seems to lag a bit. My edges, the edges of vision, on the right and left of the horizontal field of view. Uh, jitter and blur just a little bit in Steam, which is annoying. But let's try taking it off here. Want the stick slightly forward and centered. I'll control direction with rudder. Rudder is the first control to become effective, the last to lose effectiveness. I'll have to get the wings level with rudder at the beginning and then hold them level. There, come on, come on, baby, stay behind him. Stay behind. Ooh, come on, come on. A little bit of right, right stick here. I should have enough speed to get off the ground now. And it should just lift off for me. But it won't, so I'll reef forward and reef back. Come on. <laughs> We're going to hit trees here. Good grief, I shouldn't need 5,000 feet of runway. Good Lord, look at this. I just killed the... Good thing these trees are invisible. I don't know where the tow plane is, though. Oh, there he is. Holy crap. This is not an experience you'd get to enjoy in real life. Trust me. I don't know. Nothing good is going to come of this. <laughs> oh, my word. This would be like my worst nightmare in real life. Mind you, this glider is penetrating the woods a lot better than a real one would. No, it just released. So we lost the tow plane. Okay, so really, I should have been off the ground about one third of the way down that runway. No doubt about it. And instead, I was stuck behind the glider, stuck on the ground. I mean, it's just not good. It's Let's go to the main menu and let's pick a different, we'll pick a different runway. But this is really, really quite, it's a bug, I think. Um, because it seems to take an awful lot of effort to get the plane off the ground. All right, let's set the run, the time for 11 a.m. And we'll select a departure. Well, let's just pick a runway that I know has a really, really long runway. Oh, I got an idea. I, hey, I've never flown at Gibraltar. Well, let's try that. Could take a minute for it to load. How long is the runway? 5,789 feet. All right, we should, that should do it. <laughs> Well, uh, we live and we learn as we go. But I think there's, there's definitely something wrong with the way I, either a Sobo has it programmed or the way I have the control set up. And that's also a distinct possibility. A lot of times people jump to the conclusion that there's something wrong with this sim. They really screwed it up, man. And it's actually just, you know, you didn't read the direct directions and, uh, you know, what we used to say, RTFM, read the effing manual. Unfortunately, they don't come with a paper manual anymore, so. I don't know what trim should be set for in here, but I it's set for neutral right now. I'm going to move it a little bit forward this time. Let's try that. We're on a much longer runway, so... I'll just move my seat forward a little bit. Oops. Come on, Dave. I'm trying to find the happy place. And down. Uh, oh, come on. You ever get the feeling you just haven't haven't got the keys mapped correctly for this yet? All right. 
I used to like flying from the back seat in a two-seat glider because you had that huge long nose in front of you. It was really easy to uh, keep the glider straight. The only problem was if your passenger or student was wearing a hat, sometimes you had to look pretty carefully to see around them. Okay, waggle the rudder, let them know I'm ready. Spoilers are in. Now if I've got this set right, I should just have to ease the stick forward once we hit our takeoff speed. The glider should want to take off. Oh man, that needed a whole lot of rudder and stick. Let's just gently ease in behind him. Okay, I've definitely got the trim set wrong there. Let's try that again. Let's restart. Ready to fly. I'm just going to move the trim just a little tiny bit forward, not quite so much this time. From a little bit nose down. Well, I make no promises. Spoilers are in. I am ready to go. So this is Gibraltar. Like all the scenery I've seen in Microsoft Flight Sim, it looks amazing. There, that took a took a whack of rudder to get that wing up. You have to lift the wing with rudder to start with. Oh, come on, Dave. Gentle on the controls, stay behind him. Well, that's better. So I'm starting to think that a Sobo, you know, I mean, they've, they've done all right with this. It's just a matter of getting my control set correctly. I don't want to be quite so low below. But this, that was actually, I mean, even despite the little bump, the glider wanted to fly. It just, it's again, it's a trim thing. And it trim the nose right. If you do, the arrow toe is, you know, if the airplane's trimmed, you're not fighting it. It's a lot easier on the arrow toe. Those of you who tune in only to hear more about the Bimax Crystal, as soon as I'm safely off the aero tow, we'll talk about that. In the meantime, I might as well talk a little bit about flying gliders. On the takeoff, you have no aileron control and very little elevator control. At about two or three miles an hour, though, your rudder already starts to become effective. On these high-performance gliders, it takes a little longer. And your inputs have to be very large to start with, meaning you move the foot a lot, put a lot of rudder in, and then you have to learn to ease back on the rudder and use a little bit of aileron. So it could be tricky. There is an auto assist for takeoff on Aerotow, and if you want to fly gliders, but you don't care about the minutia of it, you're not really interested in becoming like Joe Hot Simulator Glider Pilot, which as far as I know doesn't come with a prize. Uh, then just use the auto takeoff thing. It'll keep you behind the glider and everybody will be happy. This is not, this is supposed to be fun. Don't torture yourself. All right, let's get back in behind it. Okay, that's better. I want to stay behind him, but I kind of want to point at the outside wing in a bank. Gibraltar. An island. Key islands of World War II, I think, was it? British naval base. We're flying past the runway again. I don't think we'll get much lift over the ocean, but we might get some ridge lift over the hills. 
it's a lot bigger than I thought Gibraltar. I have never been there in real life. My ignorance of world geography is pretty profound. So I have to apologize to uh, people living in Gibraltar for not knowing more about it. Mind you, that's a knife that cuts both ways. I've, and a friend from Europe called me here in Canada when I was living in Edmonton, saying he was going to be in Montreal in a couple of days the next day, and could I, could I drive out for coffee with him? Well, I didn't have the heart to tell him that that's about a four-day drive to get from Edmonton to Montreal. But in Europe, you can cross three or four borders in a day. Canada and the United States are huge. So I think the trick with this glider is to just set that trim on takeoff a little bit forward of neutral. And then it'll, uh, and then you can just ease the stick back a bit get the glider in the air behind the tow plane. All right, he wants me off. I'll pull the release. I'll turn right. He should turn left and descend. And now that we got rid of the noisy, stinky tow plane, we can enjoy the scenery. Here's a Miss Marvelous. Goodness gracious. With a little luck, we'll see the tow plane as I come around. I've kind of wasted time here should be setting up for a, a descent and a landing. Oh, that's weird. You really do want to be able to see that guy. Oh, look at that. So, head tracking works really good in the Pimax. It's inside out tracking, but if I lean too far over, it can sometimes get a little wacky. Is the, it's like the sim is saying, what are you doing? Are you trying to stick your head through the perspex? I guess that's what I was trying to do. So the other thing I notice in Steam is that the the scenery shifts here on me and it uh, trees come into view and dis and so on and so forth. There seems to be degradation in video quality for the same settings compared to OpenXR. I mean, it still looks good, but it kind of, it breaks the illusion that you're really there when the scenery starts to appear and disappear on the edges and shimmer a bit. So I think getting 56 frames per second, that's great, but I might have to set the resolution up a little bit and settle for maybe 40 frames per second or 45 to get rid of some of that shimmering. Let's just try something. Well, I can't really do that in this mode. I'm trying to use the, uh, the steam mirror to give you a better single panel view. haze ahead of us. I have uh, I have cloud rendering set down to low. The clouds look great in Flight Sim 2020, but you do take a hit in frame rate when you use them a little bit. Looking down to the left, the old town, I presume a lot of that's the old town over well, the Gibraltar. Looks pretty good. I mean, as it always does in Steam. And look, I, can, I feel like I'm flying into rain here. I can see Virga, which is uh, rain falling from the cloud and then being sucked back up. Or, or else this is just mist at the base of the cloud, but it looks like Virga. 
Virga can look like dirty sheets hanging down from a cloud. And it's really just moisture falling, condensing, getting dragged back up. And each time it, each time it gets dragged up, it accumulates more moisture around the drop and will eventually fall as rain or hail. That's all I can tell you about that. Might be more than you care to hear. Just having that on will cost me five or six frames per second. Well, let's fly over the airport. I think I'd rather do my circuit on this side of that this side of that hill or mountain, the Rock of Gibraltar. I'm going to pull spoilers out a bit as I descend to avoid overstressing the airplane. like it might be, is that a soccer field down there? Yeah, I think it is. Football as they call it. Yeah, nice. Cho no soy in Chukadar the football. Did I say that right? I don't know Spanish, but it's pretty weak. All right, let's go for oh, look at an airplane. How cool is that? All right, he's on final, so we're gonna we're gonna sneak in behind him. Want to make sure that I don't run out of air. first, but I don't, I don't have any power, so I better not run out of, out of altitude before I get to the end of the runway. All right, so here we go. Half spoiler out. I guess he was just doing a touch and go. Didn't really touch down, just a little pass. That was one of the coolest things I've seen in VR yet. Okay. Let's taxi off the runway here. I can get pointed the other direction, yes. Get my wings clear, there we go. Ah, okay, so that's Gibraltar in the Mediterranean. Looks marvelous, doesn't it? And Aerotoe, not as impossible as I thought, um, but you gotta have the trim set correctly. And I think for most people that, you know, if you find that's too much of a pain in the butt, don't do it. Use the auto assist. But if you, if you like to keep things authentic and you really want to learn how to, to fly it, go ahead. But it's harder than real life. <laughs> Even with the trim set correctly, I think it's tougher than real life. Um, but again, I'm still learning 
riders in here. So I hope you enjoyed this. This uh, sailplane looks wonderful. Gibraltar looks great. The colors are popping. Um, I think I will try it with uh, resolution set just a little bit higher. I'm willing to give up a few frames per second to get a slightly, I don't know, crisper image. It's still pretty crisp, but uh, it's amazing. It's amazing how good this can look on the Pimax Crystal. All right, let's thank you for joining. I've been rambling on and on here like I usually do, and I, I beg your indulgence, as I always do, and perhaps your forgiveness, too. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it.